And I think what a lot of people are doing right now in this world, and I think we're all kind of guilty of this, we are wasting our peace in places where Jesus is not king. And so we are entering into debates and conflicts of which we know there is no resolution because there is no Christ, there is no king. We're entering into conversations with people that worship all different kinds of gods, all different kinds of things. Worship science, we worship our country, we worship a, a certain lifestyle, and we're entering into these places and everyone's arguing and fighting and there, there literally is no resolution and often as Christians, we, we enter into these things, right? And we begin to drain all of our peace and all of our sanity and all of our dignity in these bottomless pits of arguments. And yet what Paul says is he himself is our peace. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, Paul says this, Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know they breed quarrels. Plus, have nothing to do with them. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach and patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of truth, and they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. But there are people in this world and on the internet, who are doing the will of Satan by creating division in this world to which there is no resolution without Jesus Christ. And Paul tells Timothy, Timothy, be smart. Timothy, be wise. See what's happening. Be mindful of what are foolish, ignorant controversies. And he says, have nothing to do with those. And what's interesting is, is we forget this, like, Christians are bringing peace within the church, and though we want world peace, we know biblically there will not be world peace until Christ returns, of which then every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And so just be careful in this season to not drain your peace and your sanity and, and your well-being in Christ, arguing with people who do not want Jesus to be their king, or, or maybe they say they're a Christian, but man... It just don't sound like they're a Christian. Their, 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 their negative disposition makes me a little bit leery. Maybe, maybe they're not telling me the truth about what they believe because the Bible says that's, that's reality. And so we have to be mindful because our light in this world is that we are a unified people. And so the church is supposed to be this unified people in the midst of racial problems, in the midst of political division, that we're supposed to be this unified, we're supposed to be a counterculture, and we've got to be mindful of not letting the, the division of the world come into the church. He literally says that there are snares of the enemy. And I guess in the end we'll know. I mean, I don't know everything, but I think politics is a snare. It's a trap set right there, right? And no one's changing anybody's mind. You know that, you know? But we hop into these things. And in the church, it's the same way. Be, be mindful of the snare of music in the church. It's a snare. It's a trap. Set before us. Step into it. How we structure things in the church. How it looks, right? Like how we do things. How we dress. There's all these different kinds of things. And earlier what Paul says is he, he talks about the circumcision and uncircumcision. And he kind of gives like a kind of a cynical remark when he says it's made in the flesh by hands. And so what Paul is saying is he's distinguishing between man-made divisions and God-made things. And so he's saying, why would you divide over something that's literally done in the flesh by hands? It's important for us in this season to know, to know that we are supposed to be a people of peace and we have an obligation to protect our peace. In Proverbs 20, verse 3, it says this. I've memorized this verse in this season. It is an honor for a man to keep aloof from strife, but every fool will be quarreling. That there are good things to argue about. There are good things where we're, we're, we're standing for the truth, but until somebody knows Jesus, there is no basis to which you are talking to them about these things. And so division is dumb because Jesus has literally defeated 
division. And in the church, all of the dividing walls of hostility in us are coming down. And, and whether or not we've found exactly what reconciliation looks like with different kinds of people, we can have faith that it is absolutely there because of what Jesus did. He says he made one new man in the place of two.